The next chapter is called The Recipe. I hope you haven't forgotten while all this was going on, I was still stuck behind the screen on my hands and knees with one eye glued to the crack. I don't know how long I had been there, but it seemed like forever. The worst part of it was not being allowed to cough or make a sound and knowing that if I did, I was as good as dead. And all the way through, I was living in constant terror that one of the witches in the back row was going to get a whiff of my presence through those special nose, hole, nose holes of hers. My only hope, as I saw it, was the fact that I hadn't washed for days. That and the never-ending excitement and clapping and shouting that was going on in the room. The witches were thinking of nothing else except the Grand High Witch up there on the platform and her great plan for wiping out all the children of England. They certainly weren't sniffing around for a child in the room. And their wildest dreams, if witches have dreams, that would never have occurred to any of them. I kept still and prayed. The Grand High Witch's dreadful gloating song was over now, and the audience was clapping madly and shouting, Brilliant! Sensational! Marvelous! You're a genius, oh brainy one! It is a thrilling invention, this delayed action mouse maker. It's a winner! And the beauty of it is that the teachers will be the ones who bump off the stinking little children. It won't be us doing it. We shall never be caught. Witches are never caught, snapped the Grand High Witch. Attention! I want everybody's attention for what I am telling you what you must do to prepare the Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. Suddenly, there came a great gasp from the audience. This was followed by a hubbub of shrieking and yelling. And I saw many of the witches leaping to their feet and pointing at the platform and crying out, Mice! 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 She's done it to show us the brainy one has turned two children into mice, and there they are. I looked toward the platform. The mice were there, all right, two of them, running around near the Grand High Witch's skirts. But these were not field mice, or house mice, or wood mice, or harvest mice. They were white mice. I recognized them immediately as being my own little William and Mary. Mice, shouted the audience. Our leader has made mice to appear out of nowhere. Get the mouse traps. fetch the cheese. I saw the Grand High Witch peering down at the floor and staring with obvious puzzlement at William and Mary. She bent lower to get a closer look. Then she straightened up and shouted, Quiet! The audience became silent and sat down. These mice have nothing to do with me, she shouted. These mice are pet mice. These mice are quite obviously belonging to some repellent little child in the hotel. A boy it will be for a Saturday, because girls are not keeping pet mice. A boy, cried the witches, a filthy, smelly little boy. We'll swipe him, we'll swizzle him, we'll have his tripes for breakfast. Silence, shouted the Grand High Witch, raising her hand. You know perfectly well. You must do nothing to draw attention to yourselves while you are living in the hotel. Let us, by all means, get rid of this evil-smelling little squirt, but we must do it as quietly as possible. For are we not all, all of us, the most respectable ladies of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children? What do you suggest, O Brainy One? they cried out. How shall we dispose of this small pile of filth? They're talking about me. I thought, these females are actually talking about how to kill me. I began to sweat. Whoever he is, he is not much important, announced the Grand High Witch. Leave him to me. I shall smell him out and turn him into a mackerel and have him dished up for supper. Bravo, cried the witches. Cut off his head and chop off his tail and fry him in hot butter. You can imagine that none of this was making me feel very comfortable. William and Mary were still running around on the platform, and I saw the Grand High Witch aim a swift running kick at William. She caught him right on the point of her toe and sent him flying. She did the same to Mary. Her aim was extraordinary. She would have made a great football player. Both mice crashed against the wall, and for a few moments, they lay stunned. Then they got to their feet and scampered away. Attention, attention, the Grand High Witch was shouting. I will now give to you the recipe for concocting Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. 
Get out your pencils and paper. Handbags were opened all over the room and notebooks were fished out. Give us the recipe, O Brainy One, cried the audience impatiently. Tell us the secret. First, said the Grand High Witch, I had to find something that would cause the children to become very small very quickly. And what was that? cried the audience. That part was simple, said the Grand High Witch. All you have to do, if you are wishing to make a child very small, is to look at him through the wrong end of a telescope. She's a wonder, cried the audience. Who else would have thought of a thing like that? So, you take the wrong end of a telescope, continued the Grand High Witch, and you boil it until it gets soft. How long does that take? they asked her. Twenty-one hours of boiling, answered the Grand High Witch. And while this is going on, you take exactly forty-five brune mice, and you chop off their tails with a carving knife, and you fry the tails in hair oil until they are nice and crisp. What do we do with all those mice who have had their tails chopped off? asked the audience. You simmer them in the frog juice for one hour, came the answer. But listen to me. So far I have only given you the easy part of the recipe. The really difficult problem is to put in something that will have a genuine delayed action result. Something that can be eaten by children on a certain day, but that will not start working on them until 9 o'clock the next morning when they arrive at school. What did you come up with, O Brainy One? They called out, tell us the great secret. The secret, announced the Grand High Witch triumphantly, is an alarm clock. <gasps> An alarm clock, they cried. It's a stroke of genius. Of course it is, said the Grand High Witch. You can set a 24-hour alarm clock today, and at exactly 9 o'clock tomorrow, it will go off. But we will need 5 million alarm clocks, cried the audience. We will need one for each child. Idiots, shouted the Grand High Witch. If you are wanting a steak, you do not cook the whole cow. It is the same with, with the alarm clocks. One clock will make enough for a thousand children. Here is what you do. You set your alarm clock to go off at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Then you roast it in the oven until it is crisp and tender. Are you writing this down? We are, your grandness, we are, they cried. Next, said the Grand High Witch, you take your boiled telescope and your fried mouse tails and your cooked mice and your roasted alarm clock, all together you put them into the mixer. Then you mix at a full speed. This will give you a nice, nice thick paste. While the mixer is still mixing, you must add to it the yolk of one gruntle's egg. A gruntle's egg, cried the audience, we shall do that. Underneath all the clamor that was going on, I heard one witch in the back row saying to her neighbor, I'm getting a bit old to go birds nesting. Those ruddy gruntles always nest very high up. So, you mix in the egg, the Grand High Witch went on, and one after the other, you mix in the following items. The claw of a crabber cruncher, the beak of a blubber snitch, the snout of a globe squat, and the tongue of a cat springer. I trust you are not having any trouble finding these. None at all, they cried out. We will spear the blabber snitch and trap the crab cruncher and shoot the gravel squirt and catch the cat springer in his burrow. Excellent, said the Grand High Witch. When you have mixed everything together in the mixer, you will have a most marvelous looking green liquid. Put one drop, just one titchy droplet of this liquid into a chocolate or a sweet, and at nine o'clock the next morning, the child who ate it will turn into a mouse in 26 seconds. But one word of warning. Never increase the dose. Never put more than one drop into each sweet or chocolate. And never give more than one sweet or chocolate to each child. An overdose of delayed action mouse maker will mess up the timing of the alarm clock and cause the child to turn into a mouse too early. And you wouldn't want that, would you? You wouldn't want the children turning into mice right there in your sweet shops. That would give the game away. So, be very careful. Do not overdose. And that's the end of the chapter. 
This recipe for making this delayed action mouse maker sounds complicated. They have to boil alarm clocks and melt down telescopes and get all these animal parts from these like crazy mystery animals that I've never heard of. But did the witches say they could do it? Absolutely. Why do you think that? Well, yeah, they're witches. They want to get rid of all the children, right? And if you tell the Grand High Witch no, what might happen to you? Those lasers might come for you, right? So all the witches are like, sure, yep, we got it, we can do it. All right, let's keep going.